Hello again. Uh, this is Cody Lee of BlackCatBooks.org, author of Cruel and Beautiful, I the Dragon, Rabbit Hole, and King Dio. With the release of No More Heroes 3, a lot of people are kind of um, in the middle of like discussing the game and ranking it, and I think the general reception of No More Heroes 3 has been very, very positive. I myself love the game. I think it's... Uh, I think it's a stellar title. I think it has a lot of mainstream appeal. I think it's going to sell sell quite a bit. Uh, I think uh, I think Suda did everything I w would want him to do with this title. I'm very happy with it in general. But like the thing that like I think a lot of people are really uh, coming to terms with when it comes to this franchise and um, this series, uh, this series in particular, uh, this game in particular, is that like no matter how good No More Heroes Three is, no matter like how many. Now, how many? No matter how many, how many copies it sold, it sold, or how many, how many people like love it, or like what its Metacritic score is, no matter what, I think there will never, there will never be a game that surpasses the original No More Heroes. Like at least not in this franchise. Like when it comes to uh, No More Heroes Three, like a lot of the discussion, a lot of the negative discussion. Is revolving around the fact that, like, yeah, I like No More Heroes one better, and as a big fan of the original, I happen to agree. I I think No More Heroes one had better boss designs. I think it had a better setup. I think it had better one liners. I think it had a, a better build up to that climax. I think the I think the the twist ending was better. Like I um, I like the open world better. Like I like the general general feel, the music, like, the, the general pr presentation, like, the characters in general, like, No More Heroes 1 hit everything out of the park for me. Like, it is, in spite of, like, all of its flaws and limitations, it is a 10 out of 10. Like, it is one of my favorite games of all time, probably my first or second. I keep going back and forth, and I think right now, after, during my No More Heroes 1 high, I, I am calling it my favorite, my absolute all-time favorite. All the... All the issues, like, all those things aside, like, I fanatically love No More Heroes 1 because I think that in spite of everything that it kind of missteps on, everything it does wrong, in spite of all of that, it spectacularly managed to rise above the sum of its parts. Like, it is, it is a work of art in spite of its limitations. Like, uh, or perhaps because of them, I would say. Like, a lot of people have called this game jank. They've called it broken. They've called it, like... Um, too easy like a, a lot of people have a lot of things bad negative things about no more heroes one but i i think like everything comes together exactly the way it should be it is in my mind like the ideal video game like it is it is exactly what i'm looking for in a title and it delivers everything i would want perfectly but the thing is the thing is when it comes to like things that are this innovative this fresh original new the thing about this um, this kind of thing, you can really only do it once. You can things are only new once. Like everything after that is just a rehash or a repeat or just a redo of what we've seen before. And we've kind of already seen this with No More Heroes Two, but I think it's also become a bit of a problem with No More Heroes Three, where they they uh, throw in the, the the ranking system for no reason. Sylvia is like handling like this thing like this galactic superhero ranking thing uh for no reason like the ranking system is there just because the the original had it and that's the way i feel i felt like throughout a lot of no more heroes 3 right like oh destroy man is here oh because he was a big character in the original bad girl is here because she was popular in the original um like <laughs> um like, Sylvia Crystal is here, like, because she had such a prevalent role in the original. Like, over and over and over again with this kind of thing. And it's not the Suda's fault or anything like that. It, it's, uh, we want to see these characters again. We want to see them do more things. We want to see them, like, uh, continue the story. We want to see, like, uh, where, where the, where the, uh, where the games go from here. We want more of the same, right? But at the same time, like it is more of the same it's not fresh and new anymore it's not original and as a result of that it loses that special spice that made the original so compelling like it's hard to stay as invested in travis and sylvia's relationship as you uh, as you were in the original when you kind of have this understanding like 
they've established a status quo at this point. Like they, they've established like a general routine that these two go through. And and by three, I would say like it, it's gotten kind of old. Like I, I'm kind of I, I I I love Sylvia to death. Like I love her like in one and in two. But like three, I, and I really do feel this. I, I don't understand why the character was there to begin with. Like I don't understand her role in the plot. I don't understand like her marriage to Travis. I don't understand like what's going on with like the deep lore of like Sylvia Crystal. Like I, they took one of my favorite characters, and because they couldn't really think of anything to do with her, like she was just sidelined for for no reason. Like it just, it, it it's just uh. It, it was something I was thinking about a lot while playing this. It was just like, wow, uh, wow. Uh, did Suda drop the ball? Well, no, because he was focusing on doing other stuff, like uh, other things with the game, the combat, like uh, focusing on a lot of other characters, more characters than we've ever had before, by the way, unless you count Travis Tux again, which was just loaded with them. Like lots of different characters, lots of really uh, compelling things to talk about, lots of, lots of things just going on at once. Uh, Poor Sylvia got laid by the wayside. And, I mean, you, you can argue the same thing happened in the original with, like, Henry and stuff like that. We get more Henry lore in this uh, than we did in the original, I think, where we just get that weird info dump at the end. But uh, this is... Uh, like, it was its own self-contained thing. Like, in No More Heroes 1, it was... Uh, the joke was... Uh, the joke worked, right? Like, in 3, it just... It, like it's not the same anymore like it's been done before and, and as a result of that it's not special or unique like it's just another no more heroes game and uh it, it's kind of sad that i have to say that uh but uh this is the reality of like the creative process and things like that like j just like you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to like recreate the success of such a phenomenon like such a such a such a high profile thing like like Joe J.K. Rowling would never be able to write a Harry another Harry Potter. Like uh, George Lucas would never be able to produce another Star Wars. Like it's just you don't always break boundaries when you create something new, and and that's uh, that that's the thing that like I think the No More Heroes sequels are all suffering from. Like none of them can match what the original did. Like with, with its uh, with its characterization, with its uh, with its presentation, with just uh, like. There's so much about No More Heroes 1 that's still kind of unique. Like, playing it even now, like, even after the sequels, you end up, like, finding yourself, like, wondering about, like, Sylvia's true nature and her motivations and stuff like that. Here, it's like... I mean, she's there, I guess. And she's a secretary, I guess. And she also runs the rankings. I don't know. It, it's like... Oof. I, um... I uh, I, I love No More Heroes three, I do, but I truly don't believe that the original No More Heroes will ever be topped.